I remember there was a day I visited him recently, and when I uh, visited him uh, privately in his house, when I was greeting him, then he pretended like he was falling under the power of God. <laughs> <laughs> in the suit, you know, where Apostle and Apostle, people fought or they said that he was using an evil spirit. They never knew his secret. They said he, he, he had a snake. It was trending in the suit. <laughs> Yeah, they say he was using a snake for him to do miracles, for a church to go. And this the real secret, which is what I want to tell you now. If you can study Apostle and Apostle, and I'm telling you because I've been with him, even in the private, yeah, his main secret, his number one secret, which people don't know. Is Greetings viewers, on today's video we are here with Pastor Brace, and we're going to be talking about ministry in particular. So. I want to know, Pastor Price, we've been seeing you that you are consistent in the ministry and yeah. you are successful. So we want to know how come and how. Yeah. Remember, say, ministry is about the grace of God. You cannot just be successful in ministry without the grace of God. And for you to have that grace, you need to have mentors. Meaning there have to be people who inspire you. There have to be people who are your mentors. Just like me, I had different mentors that inspired me uh, in the ministry. Some directly, some indirectly. So can you mention uh, people that influence you in the ministry? Yo, say there are a lot, but let me see if time can permit. The first one definitely tends to go to Apostle Mofaro Maposa. I don't oh, know if you know him. Apostle Maposa from Lesotho. Yeah, from Lesotho, originally from Lesotho. So how did you know him? Like, when did you know him? Yeah, like? so basically, ne, what happened is that I was raised in Lesotho originally. Ne? I was raised in Lesotho. So, my Apostle Maposa, I knew him from when I was 12 years. Just imagine. When I was 12 years, uh, my father visited his church. And usually in those days, he used to pray for people on the streets. So then my father happened to go to his church. Then I went to his church. I was 12 years. And by the way, just for interest's sake, that's the place where I first learned how to speak in tongues. Can you believe it? Interesting. interesting. Yeah. yeah. So that's how I knew him. So that's how you yeah. knew So when did you start learning about ministry from yeah. him? Yeah. So basically at his church, there is something that he calls a training center. He calls it training center. It's something like a Bible study or a training program. So they, they, they have another one that they call International Training Center. So the International Training Center is the one that equips people into being pastors. So I was the youngest attending that session. So I used to learn about the prophetic. That's when I learned how to move in the prophetic from him. I used to also learn how to do miracles. Actually, like that's what I'm saying, a majority, a majority percentage of my life and ministry comes from the influence of our pastor and our pastor. So I went through the training center. He was the one himself teaching the training center. Just imagine. Every day after school, I would go there. Then I completed also what he calls international training center, which is equivalent to uh, that equips pastors. Okay, so yeah. some, what are some of the secrets, um, some of the key principles that you learned that mm -hmm. you, you can say this is the go to, like mm -hmm. this is one of the uh, principles, basic principles mm -hmm. for ministry? Yeah, that from, you from him. From him. But uh, what people don't understand, many people miss the secret of Apostle Marcus. They see him as a great man, they don't know that he has secrets. And do you know that before I tell you the secret, there was a time in the Sutra eh, where Apostle Marcus, the people thought or they said that he was using an evil spirit. They never knew his secret. Mm. They said he, he, he had a snake. It was trending in the suit. <laughs> yeah, they say he was using a snake for him to do miracles, for a church to grow. Yeah? Mm. But people don't understand this, the real secret, which is what I want to tell you now. If you can study Apostle Maposa, and I'm telling you because I've been with him, even in the private, yeah? his main secret, his number one secret, which people don't know, is faith. 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 As simple as that. It's not simple. <laughs> <laughs> like... People would say it's simple. Yeah. Faith. Yeah. Yeah. But some people would say we have faith. Right? Yeah. Why don't we? Yeah. Mm. The, uh, the issue of the what I've realized né, is that his faith is not just in words. Mm. His faith is more in actions. Because when he started his church, he was just 21 years old. Just imagine. Then he went in different radio stations of Lesotho by faith. And he started praying for people there. He started praying for people there and he got slots for him to, to start the church. Even when he came to Bloomfontein here, he got a slot in Motel of Supernatural. So his faith is more of an action 
uh, type of faith, you know. And action, not just saying, I believe, I believe, but he would take actions. He would go even to the CDFM, he once went to the CDFM, and he got a slot in. Mm. Just like that. So he's a man of faith, and whatever, most of the things that he teaches in his uh, material, or even in his Bible study, what he calls training center, is about faith. You cannot be a son of Apostle Maposa, and then you don't walk by faith. So tell me, what is interesting about the Apostle Maposa that you find interesting? Yeah, my Apostle Maposa is somebody who's very funny. And uh, as I've told you, I knew Apostle Maposa from when I was 12 years up until now. And I believe this is a lesson from somebody. Like, you knowing somebody for a long, for a long time, that does not mean that you have to be familiar to the person. Even now, I still respect him. But I've known him for more than 10 years, just imagine. So the funny part or interesting part about the Apostle Maposa is the jokes that he does. I remember the other day I visited him recently, and when I uh, visited him privately in his house, when I was greeting him, then he pretended like he was falling under the power of God. <laughs> <laughs> so just imagine, I, I'm greeting him, and when I uh, shook his hand, Apostle Maposa just fell. He fell in the, in the house under the power. Then I'm like, ah! Uh, did I make the apostle of a fall? Then he started laughing. <laughs> so he's somebody who has some humor. Like he's, he's, that's the thing that I love about, about him. He shows you that he's not a superman, but he's a man of God. He's still a man, but who is used of God. So he likes jokey, jokes. He likes people to be uh, laughing around him. That's what I've learned a lot about him. And I believe, uh, as I told you, that I still have many men of God that I want to talk about. But I don't know if time will permit us. I, 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 there are other men of God that have impacted my life, like Pastor Chris, like Pastor Benny Hinn, a lot of them. Okay. Yeah. So that is the end of this part. We'll talk about other pastors in the next part. Thanks for watching. Click that subscribe button. Thank you.